say uh, the special board meeting for February. I mean, February, uh, Friday, <laughs> Friday, November the 8th, 2019 Ooh, is officially open. Good morning. Good morning. At this time, we will ask uh, Mr. Buckles if he will do the pledge for us, and we're going to ask uh, Ms. Pickens if you will give us a prayer. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the people that have come to this meeting. And Lord, we just ask that you guide us and direct Please, us God. and give us the, the knowledge and the heart to do the right thing yes, for the, the employees of this county. Lord, thank you so much for thank everything you. you've done for us. Thank you. And continue to be with us and bless our county. Amen. 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 Thank you, Holly. Okay. okay, at this time we are set for public comments. And you don't have any. Okay. All right. Let's go right into our action items. Number one, selection Blue Cross Blue Shield plans. Madam Chair, I'd, I'd like to. Uh, and we, are we, we're going to go through every section of this plan, is that correct, okay. first, before we make a recommendation? Uh, how do you want us to do it, Charlie? The insurance committee uh, gave two recommend or two options uh, for their recommendation, and it's the uh, board's vote to decide which option that you would like to choose. Okay. I'll make a motion that we recommend uh, the choice that includes plan C, D, and E. I will second that motion. Okay, it's been properly moved by Mrs. Jane Crawford that we accept option two, the secondary choice of the committee for plans C, D, and E, and it was second by Mr. David Buckles all in favor of for discussion. Absolutely. Oh, okay. discussion. All right. My next question would be, Mr. Douglas, could other aspects be asked, like how the superintendent feels? Mr. Superintendent, could you give us some guidance on what you've met with finance and give us an idea of what you think? Yeah, and again, there's some, uh, you know, some financial considerations that, you know, are on some other other options that you'd be looking at today. Uh, again, my recommendation would be uh, the status quo of C, D, and E. And we have a number of people that are still on plan C. And I think at this time, you know, we would be, you know, basically creating a, a hardship on these people as far as changing this now. I'm not saying in the future that can be done, but uh, my recommendation would be to maintain C, D, and E. Okay. Any other discussion from the board? Okay. All right. It's, again, uh, Mrs. Crawford made the motion. Mr. Buckle second. We've had our discussion. All in favor of option two, the secondary, secondary choice of the committee for plan C, D, and E, let it be known by I. Aye. Aye. Opposes? Hearing none. Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Item number two, the board insurance subsidy contribution. Madam Chairman, I'd like to once again hear from the superintendent uh, on how after listening to <coughs> some of the testimony uh, earlier from our financial director how uh, how he would like to to, uh, to to kind of direct us here not direct us but advise on what he feels okay mr superintendent yeah uh and thank you for that um 
I think one thing our, you know, we're going to have an increase no matter what in our insurance. And again, we've, we've uh, provided uh, a salary increase for our employees first time in 12 years of uh, up to 3%. And again, I think we are doing everything we can to make sure we don't take away that, that salary increase through uh, insurance rates. By the same token though, we have to be cognizant of the fact that the insurance fund is our ultimate goal as a district at least as superintendent is we ultimately want to be self-insured and in order to be self-insured we have to maintain the integrity of the insurance fund um, and i think our finance director made that aware you know the numbers aware to you that uh in order to do that we have to maintain a point to where we do not bankrupt that fund because again this is a long-term solution and but by the same token we want to soften the blow um, from the board of any increases to our employees as best as we can. And currently you have a $75 MOU flat rate that has been in effect, which will uh, expire sunset at the end of December. My recommendation would be to help soften the blow and not to bankrupt the system. And again, my concern with the tiered system that was proposed is there's too many unknowns. Again, with any migration, uh, we would we know what the maximum would be and the maximum would definitely bankrupt us but there's so many unknowns of how many people would migrate to D and C through that tiered system I feel very uncomfortable now I know Miss Odom does too with just saying hey let's do the tier system at this point and not knowing what the movement would be so my my recommendation would be to uh, would be to uh, authorize our chief negotiator up to $150. In other words, double that $75 flat fee and uh, let uh, our chief negotiator, uh, Mr. Bowling and Mr. Modell work out an MOU that would, uh, would be up to $150 per month flat fee for all three of those plans. That's my recommendation. So hey. Madam Chair, I'd like, to make a, I'd like to make a recommendation that we accept uh, that and we go with the the uh, 100 the doubling the insurance subsidy to 150 dollars i'll second it okay it's been motioned by mr david buckles that we increase the 75 dollar subsidy to 150 dollars uh flat rate across the board uh is that do we need more discussion second? oh any discussion Keep not wanting to discuss it. I apologize. You tired of discussing? Any discussion? Who, who second that? I did. Um, Crawford. Ms. Crawford. Yes, I'm waiting. And if you, um, and again, if if you have any questions for Miss Odom, uh, she's here. I know she's provided you some information, but just mm -hmm. in case. Okay. If anybody needs any, further clarification, okay. she's here. For that any session. further discussion from the board? Hearing none. It's been motioned again by Mr. David Buckles. Probably could, I guess. That would be up to Mr. Douglas. It, it would uh, be allowable uh, if the uh, board chair uh, chooses to hear from the insurance committee. All right. It, Mr. Modell? Whichever one wants uh, to come. You are Mr. I, Smith. It doesn't I matter. A question. Yes, um, sir. And, and Rhonda may be able to help me out with this, but, but $150 across the board, how is that? It's the exact same thing. And that's that's the worst that. case scenario. Yes, and that's what I for the tier the system. Worst case scenario, but as we talked this morning, the idea was to, to not if an employee wants to choose a certain plan, mm -hmm. not to make them feel like they're treated differently, maybe even be penalized if they don't get enough. And I did. Ron, Ron can you come up to the mic? I just yeah, want to make the, sure the, the folks on plans D and E are penalized every year when their rates go up at a rate commensurate with what the plan C folks are getting, and this is this is what we're trying to correct here. The folks that are on plans D and E they're getting a, an increase that's not commensurate with what their claims are every year and that's the reason for the uh, recommendation of the tiered system is to try to you know even that out a little bit we can't the insurance companies won't give us you know a tiered increase based on what the claims are per plan they say well we got to kind of rate it across the board and there are minor differences between them but it's all roughly the same increase plan c is running at 100, what, 107 percent 
whatever, over 100%. D and E are running more healthy, but the plans, folks on plans D and E are getting increases that are not in line with what their claims are. If you give everybody across the board, this is, again, it's, it's softening the blow for the folks on plan C who are the ones that are driving the claims. And I just, I, I want you guys to understand what, what, this, what this means. You know, we've talked about the death spiral, we've talked about folks getting off the insurance. Uh, if you talk about in, uh, talking about the ultimate goal of going to self-insurance, $150, I mean, if, if we're concerned about the cost of the tiered plan, this is more expensive. This is the worst case scenario for the tiered plan. This costs more than, you yeah, know, it costs more. It costs well, it costs exactly as much, same, well, as much as the maximum, but it's the board, as much as the maximum. It's you know. the board contributing the exact same amount to every employee instead of having anybody that's on plan C call them and say, why did you treat me differently? Why are you we have, we have, giving in the past, we have had $75 a month and you're giving the other people, you know, a hundred and a hundred. Because we're looking at the long-term health of the okay. group plan here. All right. Well, let me do this. I will withdraw my motion and somebody else can make the very same motion shortly and well, let's discuss it for a little while. So I'll withdraw my motion at this time and somebody else can make another motion, but, um, I was under the impression I felt like we were doing what was best for and that's everybody. Honestly well, and, and they're, they're, but, but the out. argument I heard from the superintendent just a moment ago is that we want to look to our, to, we don't want to bankrupt that insurance reserve fund. Mm -hmm. And no, this was, costs was, as much as the exactly worst the case scenario. She told us. Yeah, she told yeah, us. Yeah. I said that. I, so. Okay, but, but I, I don't understand, you know, I, I'm not, it's not adding up in my head. You know, the, the cost of, of the, the tiered plan is less, could be, probably would be less than the 150 because that's the maximum. That's the worst case scenario, moved which is what the superintendent down. said would, 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 could bankrupt the, well, now's, the insurance now's reserve. Now's the time for all of us to, to talk about it and to have Ms. Odom. I, I, I felt real good about it, you know, but I don't feel as, as good now that you and I have talked or you've come up and talked, but uh, I'm willing to hear any other items and I but the rest of the board may feel strongly about where we are right now with this so we got to see what happens okay so for me and, and anyone else that may want to hear explain the tier start with uh, so we'll start with kind of the, the what are we talking dollars and cents mm -hmm. as close as you can get it for right. us so the re uh, let me start with just kind of a justification for the tiered plan justification for uh, a di different amounts of subsidies for the different plans, which is not a new thing. We've done this before. The insurance committee and the, the board has given uh, subsidies to certain plans years past. It's been a while. I, I, I yeah. don't remember that. That's, that's, that's correct. It, it has happened. It's in the past. We would try to drive folks to plan B or to plan C in the old days when we had ABC uh, to try to drive folks towards the less rich plans because the claims were high on the, on the more rich plans. The folks on plan C have claims ratios of 107, 100 plan C, the, what's the claims ratios in plan C? 125%? 120, oh, we're 107 overall, right? Yeah, 107 overall, so 125% MLR on plan C. And plans D and E are riding at less than 100, they're 50, 60, 50, 60. I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. The, that means the folks on plans D and E are not driving the claims for the insurance. It's the folks on Plan C that are getting the most benefit from the insurance for the least. They're getting more bang for their buck than the folks on Plan D&E already. And with a across the board $150 per, per person for everybody, you're further subsidizing the folks on Plan C that are, that are already utilizing and driving the claims. In the past when we gave different subsidies, it was to try to encourage folks, just like when the board gave uh, the uh, um, the seed money for the HSA accounts was to try to drive folks towards a high deductible plan to give them a little in, in, uh, a little push to give that a try um, and in the past we weren't able to allow people to move back up plans they, they, we, we've in the there's a lot of precedent here for trying to encourage folks to move to a less rich plan so that they're more cost conscious and they're more concerned about where they're spending health insurance dollars okay um, I don't think that I'm speaking out of turn here to say that it's not fair to the folks on plans D and E to keep subsidizing. They are subsidizing plan C with their premiums, mm -hmm. with their premiums increasing at the rates they are every year that are not in line with their claims. 
they are subsidizing. The folks that are paying premiums on Plan D and E are already subsidizing Plan C every year. Let me ask you a, another question, Mark. You mentioned the death spiral again. Mm -hmm. uh, we were making some pretty good ground with Mr. Albritton and, mm -hmm. and the avail process. I mean, if I mean if the board so chose to maybe go out and try to retain his service and I see a head shake, you know, it doesn't, it, I'm just curious, would that, I mean, we, we need somebody that can gather this information for us in a more, a more reasonable fashion. I hear Leon County just retained him and some other counties uh, around the state. If we were to bring him back to be our employee as well, would that appease you guys? I mean, I, are you still I can't speak for the committee because we haven't discussed that recently but uh, individually I can say that I think that it was something I, I, I was planning to bring up with the insurance committee uh, to say I think that now more than ever we need we still need to retain the services I believe because um, we're trying to right the ship we're trying to get the claims under control we'll never be able to go self-insured with 120 with 107 percent claim ratio overall we, we wouldn't that would bankrupt the district to go self-insured when we have claims that are out of control like this. Rhonda, can I ask you uh, to tell us what the increases would be for uh, policyholders on C, D, and E with $150? Mm -hmm. um, we looked at every possible subsidy mm -hmm. amount. Um, Just so we all know yeah. how that impacts so each of the plans. The and, and you got to remember, too, that yes, Ooh, Plan C does have more of the claims and everything but those employees are paying a lot more yeah. they're paying uh, without the subsidy they're paying 566.93 with the new rates a month for 10 months versus people on plan e who are paying 216 so yeah. they're paying more out of their own for pocket the also yeah. to keep c but if if we went with 150 uh subsidy all the way down um the increased cost to the employee on Plan C would be $41. Plan D would see an increase to the employee of $22.92, and Plan E would have a $6.32 increase. Is that what you were asking? Yes, we have. Okay. D would have a decrease. Yes, decrease. that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so. So let, let me say real quick that I, I do applaud the board for for uh, pursuing additional supplements for, for the employees overall. That, that, I think that's a great thing. But I just didn't think that this meshed with the argument that we're not trying to bankrupt the, the insurance reserve. You know, kind of talking about this, this is the worst case scenario of, of the everybody moving to plan E to get the $150 supplement. And I just didn't think that meshed with Well, what how we're much less about. would the tiered, if we did the tiered? That's the one that we that's don't we know. And like, yep. like I discussed the, the other day at a board meeting and I discussed today, until we have opening enrollment and, and people move, we don't know. I gave you the right. least possible cost if everybody stayed where they were, and I gave you the maximum possible cost, which as he says is the exact cost of everybody getting a, um, well, it's the exact cost of everybody getting, what was the recommendation uh, of the committee? Was it 150 for E? So it's the exact same thing. Because <laughs> the worst case scenario is everybody moves to the tier three, which is E, and that was my worst case scenario, dollar amount wise. <laughs> and then when it was discussed, well, you know, everybody, what's the most we can do? What's the break even point for uh, the group insurance fund and everything? And what's more comfortable feeling so we don't run the risk of uh, a break even point and not maintaining the 2.7 that's in there right now? Because I explained how any person moving without our insurance moving into any of our plans mm -hmm. is a net effect of a negative if you went with whatever the subsidy amount, the easiest one would be $100. It's a net effect of a negative 5,500 because the, their 4,500 doesn't go in, and mm -hmm. then they Plus also the get the subsidy amount. So uh, what we discussed, the different dollar amounts that we looked at and everything, you know, we all felt the most comfortable with 150 yes. across the board. So okay. if you were doing something for everybody. Just I would like the board to keep in mind that uh, that while the, we, we, we are certainly considering short-term impact to employees, but we also have to be considering long-term impact to the plan and the, the viability of the plan overall. 
the goal of going self-insured, I'm with the superintendent. We, we've talked about that. That's, that's, that's where we need to be. This size of a group, we need to be self-insured. And that's why we're but trying the to claims ratios the money in, we're the, not, in the insurance. Right. And, and, but the claims ratios are, are not there. We're in, we've got to get that turned around. Um, a part of what the insurance committee's recommendations are about are trying to, and with, with plan design changes, and we didn't do any of that this year, but when we do plan design changes and other things like this, trying to look at the tiered subsidies, a lot of that is about long-term driving folks to make better decisions with their insurance, driving folks to be more cost conscious about how they're using it. If they have a copay, there's no difference to the employee what they pay, but to the plan, you know, there's a huge difference maybe, but they don't shop around because the copay is there, you know. Do you feel like the people on C are not making good decisions about their health care? They don't always need to because the copays, the way that plan is structured, the PPO plan is a richer plan. Uh, the first dollar, you know, they've got a lower deductible, but the, because of the copays, the first dollar is not really theirs. You know, they pay a $30 copay for an office visit. This doctor's office might charge 200, this one might be 300, but the plan picks up the difference to the, to the employee, it doesn't make any difference. And so there's not that the push they don't really have to necessarily Shop now we would encourage folks to and there's uh, you know doesn't, in the resources that we have people can do that but doesn't with us being with a company and they're they're saying what's the most allowable wouldn't it be the same no matter which doctor you went to in the state of Florida or in Palatka if the insurance company says you know we're only going to pay eighty dollars for um, and so that doctor okay. has said they so we'll will talk pharmaceuticals the then we'll talk pharmaceuticals yeah. Yeah. yeah they get a prescription for something their their plan the the tiered plans or whatever the copays are for the for the meds doesn't change the price for them but to the plan there's a huge difference on that if they go with this brand or they say hey you know what that one's an expensive one of on my plan can we look for something else that is equivalent that does the same thing but that is cheaper to our plan you know the, but they're you know and they've got a lot of you know all the carriers have re resources to help folks make those choices to cost comparisons cost estimates um, and one of the in the rally program one of the uh, one of the twenty five dollar gift cards you can earn was for getting a cost estimate for something yeah. and uh, but there were differences in, in what the cost you know uh, what the cost would be to to the to the plan for different things in there pharmaceutical is a big part of that yeah you know drugs but uh, but there are other services yeah. things that are yeah. uh, you know, other, other activities that other other because uh, I just wanted to say like, I, I'm on C mm -hmm. obviously um, and, and I do everything that United Healthcare tells me to do to try to take care of myself mm -hmm. um, I pay more for my insurance um, but I still, even after my insurance kicks in, I'm still paying so much money to keep myself well. So, you, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the best thing to do is. I feel like people on C need it, because we pay so much more for our premium. $6,000 deductible is pretty rough on that plan C now. It is, it is, and my wife met that this year. We're on, we're on, uh, we're on no, uh, well, my, we're on plan E, and my wife, uh, you know, my wife had some, procedures done this year and we we've, we've paid that out of pocket max you know we're well, there for this year for her because uh, would, it, would, um, it, would it make you would it make the insurance or the bargaining unit more let, make this more palatable if we dropped plan C to a hundred and 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 kept D&E &E at, at let, let me interrupt you and say that I've I've but got Thomas kind of, you know, kind of I've, I've got I've got mixed feelings of this because Thomas, I, I'm not as, ready as, to make you know, a decision from, from, a, from, a, from a bargaining standpoint I'm like hey every dollar we can get for the employees you know but uh, but you know kind of got my insurance committee hat on right now you know saying you know looking at the long term viability of the plans and trying to make sure that we are encouraging folks to you know we got folks on plan C they probably need to be on plan D or E because they don't go to the doctor enough yep. to, to utilize it right uh, they should be paying lower premiums and building up an HSA account for when they need to go to the doctor you know um, but that's so scary though that they won't yeah, put yeah. money into an right. HSA first first of all I want to preface what I'm about to say with the fact that I agree with everything uh, Mark is saying from a strategical long-range goal um, the only the only the only problem or there's a few problems a lot of people are on plan C because they need to be on plan C wow. right so um, if you automatically take that plan away yeah. those people will go on plans D or E and those unhealthy I hate to use the word unhealthy when I'm talking about people, but I, I don't know how else people to say it. People with problems. But everything, they, it, oh, it, it comes with them. So that will uh, affect that just a little bit. Uh, but the biggest thing is, even though it's a great idea to probably go to plans D and E, 
pulling a rug out from people who haven't had a chance to weigh in on it. You give them a raise and then you take it right away because it's going up, what, $91? If, they, if, if we kept the $75 as is, mm -hmm. I think it would go up $91. So $116. So $116 a month for uh, a group of people, and consequently it's the largest group of people who have health insurance. Over half are on Plan C. If you increase theirs by $116 without any notice whatsoever, uh, it's going to feel like a pretty big blow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I get it. I understand exactly what the, the strategy is. I understand it. Um, but it, it hurts so many people in the here and now. I think if we're going to do something this radical, we should put everybody on notice. 12 months from now, That's this is going to be a happening That's thing, and we're going to start. We, we tried to do that last year, though. Okay. <laughs> we, I mean, a year ago, we had that conversation. Said Not everybody's we, paying attention. I don't think there, we've already voted on C, D, and E. Mm -hmm. That vote has already happened. Mm -hmm. So it's, now we're just we're, talking. Just, sub just the subsidy. The one, yeah, if whether it's up here, subsidy. what the amounts oh. are across yeah. the board. Yeah, yeah. come on, people. I just wanted to bring one thing out and, and you know, used to we were worried about participation dropping and that being the death spiral. I don't think by doing what you're doing, I understand the concept, I understand that C's high, a lot of utilization and it, it is high. But um, I don't think that that is going to help us in the participation whenever um, the plan the plans stay the same or even E goes up a little bit, that you're not going to get any more participation. In fact. In years to come, I think we're going to have the same thing. What's the definition of insanity? Um, Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Okay, thank you. Mark, you're going to have to help. Uh, I'm going to say now. one more thing. Thomas said, uh, you know, that uh, you know, we don't want to hurt anybody. Well, uh, the folks on Plan D and E every year when their premiums go up at a rate greater than what their claims show, they're hurting. You know, so I just. Um, we need to, we've, we've got to look at that we, and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm game for, for whatever kind of conversation folks want to have about it, but, but I can tell you the insurance committee, and you guys, you guys have praised the insurance committee for their knowledge and for their, the hard work they've done. Uh, we have spent a lot of time talking about this stuff and, and, you know, the long-term plan is, you know, self-insurance, where we need to be. And working with Joe, working with the Vale, we're trying to turn the ship around so that we can bring those claims down, the ratios down, so that we can be in a position to go self insure you know, and that's, uh, can't do it at 107% claim ratios. No, nobody yeah. up here, none of yeah. us are insurance experts. Yeah. And, and we aren't either, but, uh, but we, we try. We but Rhonda to is our, More than we are. she is our chief financial officer, mm -hmm. and we have to do what we feel she's comfortable with us doing. I've withdrawn my motion, but somebody's free to make another motion, uh, the same motion if you want to make it or, or not. I just... I, I just wish there was a way to make everybody yeah. happy and be all things to all people. I just hadn't yeah. quite f figured out how to do that yeah. yet. either. Ms. Gare. Yes, Ms. Motor, you mentioned that we had the conversation years past that mm -hmm. we we are going to notify the employees ahead of time that this is down the road. Mm -hmm. How did we do that? Well, we had the conversation last Word year. Word of mouth. The, uh, you know, we do to be uh, well, we, we, I mean, it hasn't actually been announced. We, we had the conversation last year here. that yes. uh, kind of in the insurance committee in here that we would, you know, look, this, this is something that's coming, and we definitely need to give people warning. We, the recommendation last year was to raise the deductible bit on Plan C to kind of help tr people transition to a higher deductible type plan. Kinda, and then you guys voted no on that. That's fine. Um, but kind of prepping people for that. Because one of the biggest problems with Plans D&E is that people fear the change. They fear not having a copay. They fear not having the money to go to the doctor. Uh, they don't understand that the difference in the premiums, you stick into an HSA. And so we've, we've met our out-of-pocket max for Lindsay this year, but we had the money in our HSA to cover. Now, not all the initially before, but since the time we've, you know, uh, because the difference in premiums, we put in that HSA. And so the money's been there. We had, you had the money in the account to pay for it. So we didn't have to worry about a copay because we had it in the HSA account to pay for that. Uh, we've briefly I think more people are understanding it more. Yeah. But I think the fear, and, and yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but the fear is that if you do move to one, there is a difference in premium. But how long is it going to take that difference? It'd be the end of the year before you'd have enough. Right. 
in that HSA. So if yeah. you have something major happen early, yeah, what do you do if there's something catastrophic? They don't have the money to cover. It's what I've heard from different mm -hmm. people. Yes, now I have heard that. Well, if like I said, we didn't have, uh, there wasn't enough in ours to pay for all of it up front. We paid what we could then, and we paid the rest after after the fact set up payment plans and we paid off as, as we go whatever yeah. we do we probably yeah. we probably need to send a letter to every employee, employee. telling them exactly what's and maybe happening quarterly and, something and what's coming up next year it's coming. It's, this is I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to discuss yes. I'm over here if you have any other questions all right thank you any any further discussion before we entertain uh, another motion because if you recall mr. buckles rescinded rescinded yeah, his his uh i didn't motion. know if another board member would want to make a different motion yeah. to tear it or not or to stick and, with and, where we and were. let us most definitely hear what the committee That's has correct. said and and mr buckles brought out making sure absolutely sure that the employees understand that 12 months from now you will be looking at you know and it will be spelled out and, and possibly it could be done. Well, then we well, got to decide how that's going to be done. Before. We're, yeah. going, we're going to have to follow up through, on that through. because it's easy to sit up here every I mean, year and say, we it. want everybody to yeah. know. Right. And, that's and what it, I said. We need to match that plan now. A letter that says you sign this and return it so you got proof of it. If that's how we're going to go. Collins, is that feasible? Uh, I know because now everything is direct deposited as far as their money. So it's not like you get a check in an envelope back in the day when I was there, but uh, a letter being mailed to all of the employees that will give them notice that this is coming. Okay, it's a, it's an easy fix. Somebody but we want to somebody's make sure. got to be in charge. And I don't think that would need to come from Tammy or from my office. That needs to come from from the board. Okay, Mr. Attorney, is there? I don't think you need to vote on the the letter today. Uh, maybe uh, no, no, no. We just we just, just, want we're to just make kicking sure. around so that we understand our obligation, what we're saying to the employees and then maybe draft the letter. I mean, it doesn't have to be done right now. But right now, we do need to, to move forward with what is on the table. Chairman, and right now, if I'm not. We've got a lady raise her hand, wants to speak. Excuse me, may I just uh, make a comment? I do not. Would you please come to the podium, to the microphone, please? And state your name and who you are. Goodwin. I'm the VP of Sales and Account Management for United Healthcare. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm listening to all of this, and I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that we have filed a notice for an intent to protest okay. the decision. And my concern is going forward with this and starting enrollment while we're pending this administrative um, protest is not in the best interest of the members, of the employees, to be making decisions when, in fact, it may be changed. So I would just like to bring that to the board's attention. Okay. Thank and, you. And duly noted. And we, Thank you so much. And, Thank you. We do know that our enrollment and open enrollment is, is the problem that's the kicking us in the. I think we need to carry on and, doing what we're doing. And I think her, her if I'm if I interpreted it correctly, is 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 focusing on the letter that will state down the road, right? No. Not necessarily. No. no it's oh, the, it's the, the entire, entire process. Okay, the entire, entire process. process. Okay. But some we, we got to do something so they can start yes. contacting yeah. and enrolling okay. people. Okay, make a motion. Okay, any more discussion? I, I I do have one question for Mark. Um, if if yes, you can. Um, I believe that when there is a protest, there should be a stay as far as the decision of the board on what to do to go forward. I, um, if, if I can just say, obviously, uh, our firm is recused from the um, the bid, so I'm not uh, giving the board advice on a bid or a bid protest. Um, is, is your legal counsel here to provide? They are the, not here today. The legal, okay. Um, just just based on uh, Florida statute, my understanding is that um, a a notice to file a bid protest is not the same thing as a bid protest and that well, the state is not um 
begin until an official protest has been filed. I don't know if uh, United yeah, has. That's, that's what we got from the legal counsel that's representing the board. That's exactly what they said. I have to message them on the sheet right now. Okay. okay. So, uh, so Mr. Deetson um, is who mm -hmm. represents the board for the uh, bid and for the bid protest, and that would be in his purview. Um, so, uh, well, absent your, uh, is there a, um, a, a statute or a legal opinion that you have available um, today that you? It's statute 120 is what he was referring to. Sure. That you had, we had to um, file the intent to protest within 72 hours of the award of the bid and then we have 10 days from that to file the formal written protest and uh so you're, you're saying though uh this morning that a formal written protest has uh, not been submitted no it we have 10 days to do that but as of this that's moment a correct a and formal written protest has not been submitted I, that's correct okay uh, the intent to pro protest has been submitted the issue that or concern I have is that to go forward with all of this and start enrollment and then have to, if it, um, the protest is upheld, to have to go back to the employees and the members and tell them that they have to go through the enrollment again and that something's going to be different is not in their best interest. We so can't. my concern, my concern is about the the employees and the members that we have been serving for the last four years. We we can't leave our employees uninsured. Do we need to get? Um, they're they're not uninsured. You could have to get. Uh, you'd have to. That's probably good. Do you mind if we uninsured? take a, a brief recess? No. Thomas, you got that number. We'd have to you take a recess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. take a recess and you call Leonard. And yeah, well, if you want to take a recess, we can get the other attorney on the phone. Okay, I say ten. I can ten I can minutes. get our attorney on the phone that if you have be, a phone that we can. She's the chair. Okay. She would. All right. Uh, you you can, but we're going to take a ten minute recess from this time. So that will be ten minutes to ten. Nine forty seven. Yeah, we will reconvene. We're going to go ahead and reconvene. Uh, the time is now 9 <clears throat> Uh, Madam Chair, I spoke with uh, Mr. Deetson, uh, the board's attorney for the uh, bid and the, uh, any potential bid protest. Um, he was on his cell phone. I believe he was in a car. Um, he did not feel comfortable um, communicating to the board uh, on the telephone, not in uh, person would be his preference. Um, he asked me to relay to you that uh, the board may proceed uh, in the absence of a formal written bid protest, uh, that he would be sending the superintendent an email um to uh, your attention regarding that matter okay um and so that, we can that, that continue correct yeah okay thank you uh mr attorney for that information from mr Dietzen. at this time uh we have heard the discussion and board uh what is your preference by way of a motion or because we've had the discussion so we are now officially set for Emotion. Madam Chair, just just for um, reference, we're looking at number two, number two. Yes. On the agenda. Board subsidy. Okay. Sub board insurance subsidy contribution. Okay. That's correct. And I did have a question for Mark Modal. If if we were to say. Um, on Plan C, just give a hundred dollar subsidy. Do you think that would drive people? I mean, is that effective or not effective? The answer is I, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for being <laughs> you know, honest. So Thanks. I don't Thanks, know. Um, I, I think one of the conversations we had at the insurance committee meeting when we talked about these was that we didn't really feel like even this tiered plan of the 75, 100, 150 would drive a whole bunch of folks to, you know, everybody floods to plenty. We didn't really think that was going to happen because folks like the, they like the 
more the security that Plan C provides. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we didn't really feel like people were going to, you know, flock. jump ship for Plan yeah. E, flock to Plan E but, uh, with the different tiered options. So, but I don't, I don't know. You know, these were kind of we 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 spitballed a bunch of numbers that day, and these were kind of where where the insurance committee settled. And you know, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know where the magic numbers are. What uh, you know, what would be kind of the the what do we say break even point? Kind of you know, just the where the thresholds are that would make people more comfortable or less comfortable with with yes. making changes. I but in, in answer to her question, how does Holly Holly mentioned? Uh, just going to a hundred and then raising the other two plans is that more palatable to you i think from the long-term viability of the insurance plan yes you know and again i've said earlier that you know from the bargaining standpoint hey, every dollar that employees can get i'm, I'm for and that's so it's you know it, it's you know balancing this you know trying to i'm not i'm not trying to negotiate negotiate away dollars away from our employees you know don't get me wrong here but uh, uh but going self-insured down the road you know, trying to keep as much money in that insurance reserve as possible, trying to help the employees in the short term. You know, I, I, I understand that you guys are in a, in, a, in a tough spot here where you have to weigh all of this, you know, yes. but, uh, um, and, I, and I hope the insurance committee has, has given you enough information to really think about it. Um, and maybe even just start, whatever you decide today, think over the course of this next year. Yes, sir. Uh, a lot, and, and, and I know the insurance committee will have conversations about it, I, you know, and then, uh, We've talked about educating employees. I know that was a part of kind of the the the, the literacy uh, insurance insurance literacy that we were going to be trying to really roll out to employees, making sure they understand how all the plans work and how to you know the differences, so that people might be more comfortable moving to the high deductible plans later, uh, mm -hmm. which are um, you know I guess uh, mm -hmm. less costly to the plan. Uh, you know, but the, sh the short answer to Miss Pickens question mm -hmm. is. Yes, it is more palatable. I can't speak for the insurance committee, and, and, and again, that's you know, yeah. I think for the insurance. Not for the employees, just for the right, the, the, right, the exactly. The yeah, I got you exactly. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. Now remember, we do not have a motion on on the floor because Mr. Buckles rescinded. He he withdrew his motion. And so, uh, if all discussion have have you know come forward, and we do have the information from uh, the attorney via Mr. Deedson, and uh, Ms. Pickens has asked her question of Mr. Modell. Now we need to do something to move forward. And so I am set to entertain a motion. And I think without any any action, Mr. Turner, you could. Uh, comment on this it would revert back to the well, 75 or just so they understand no. that, that ends it that ends so it, it would December. go away it would go away so we'd have to there would be no subsidy at all unless you take action yes sir. excuse me excuse Thank me you. one minute one question for Rhonda how many people again on plan C I think I'm looking at it. I think here. she told us 915 all together. All together it's 915. On that one, 400. 440. Almost half. Almost half of what is here. Yes. Okay. And Rob and Ronald, Robert's, can you come up to the mic? Robert's rule. Just so we can just for clarification if this thing dies for lack of emotion i mean we we, we it ends oh okay that's I mean, what i was trying to make yes sure i'm trying to make sure we we understand that Rhonda, could you repeat the numbers for the um, if the these record? numbers are the ones i'm using because this is just some jotted down notes i get my numbers from tammy i'm showing 414 on c um, 414 employees yeah and and how many together on C and E, and, and excuse me, C, D, and E, or what is it? Oh, no. Minus that, that from of, your 15? Yeah, a total of 915, I think. Uh -huh. uh, I can, can make you just it. subtract. You're looking at 401. Mm -hmm. if, they're nine, if they're 915 covered, period, and you take your 14, 414 from his 501, I mean, 501. yeah, 501. 
four from nine five I five oh one. Many people on our insurance. Right, right. It's but it's I teetering had, there. I uh, look at this. I look at this, and then you know the superintendent. Mm -hmm. It obviously wants to do what we all want to do. We want to be all things to all people and help everybody. But uh, somebody's going to need to do something. And I mean, either either go with what we've looked at, or or do what Miss Pickens, the question she asked, and roll <coughs> roll back Plan C. But I don't know, y'all. If you want to surrender the gavel, you could make a motion. Well, I, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that um, we accept what we discussed to begin with, the 150 flat subsidy for all plans, knowing that we are going to do some kind of formal announcement starting with our employees for the following year that uh, we are going to what the insurance committee has been talking about so we can uh, try to get more people on D and E. Does that make sense? It doesn't, does it? So you're looking uh, just for clarification. Uh, item two under Action C Board Insurance Subsidy Contribution. You are looking at raising that to $150 flat rate across the board for all employees. Is okay. that? Clarification. I see. I see the attorney looking. You know, we want to get this right. You know, and just for Rhonda's um, purposes, that would be for participants, not all employees. Is that correct? Right. Okay. For participants. Right. So motion, Thank you. Thank you for clarification. So your motion um, Should would be for one hundred and fifty dollars per participant. Yes. Is that correct? For all plans. Okay. Would you just restate that in the motion so the record is clear? I make a motion that the board give a $150 flat subsidy for each employee that participate. No? Each, yeah, each participant. Each participant in, our, in, in the insurance. Because nobody else is making a motion. I'll second that. Okay, it's been motioned by Mrs. Jane Crawford that the board will give a $150 flat rate subsidy for all employees insured uh, with the school board, with the district, each participant. each participant in the district, and it was seconded by Mrs. Holly Pickens. And we, any discussion? My, my, only, my only discussion would be I would be more inclined to roll back Plan C <clears throat> a, a, to the $100 level that was mentioned. And you make that but I, I well, it, 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 we'll see how this motion goes, and then maybe we will. But let's let's see what happens. And that would be my only discussion. I would, I would other? have to try to meet with all the work the insurance committee's done. I'd have to try to find some way to make some ground. There. I have to second that as well. You have to take the recommendation from the insurance committee, and it's right from the very proposal. They seventy-five dollars was the first amount. I think a hundred dollars would be reasonable, and it'd be in line of what we want to accomplish down the road. And it wouldn't be such a hardship for the D and E carriers or the participants. Well, I wish y'all had made those motions. Okay. You've got a motion. I'll withdraw my motion. This is clear as oh, mine, you right? withdraw your motion? I yes. rescind my motion. Okay, and you rescind your second. Okay. But you right. want to make the motion or you want me to make a motion? Go ahead, David. I make a motion that we uh, tweak the plan to, to be a $100 cross uh, contribution to Plan C employees who take plan C and for those with D and E it be a one hundred and fifty dollar across the board contribution for them. Mr. Attorney, does that sound palatable? Is that correct you're on the two? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I'll second it. All right. Uh, it's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that Plan C participants will receive one hundred dollar flat rate 
and those participating in plans D and E will receive $150 flat rate and in line with what was recommended by our insurance committee. All right. Or Any discussion? For Rhonda, could you give us an idea of how much money that saves or puts in the, you, you, you can't answer that. I can say if those 414 people um, stay on stay, 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 yes. <clears throat> um, that's a savings of, because we just reduced from the spreadsheet $50 a month, which would be $207,000. Just that's, that's how much we would have been with, you know, not. Um, who seconded that motion? Me. I, Mr. McInnes. Anything else, Holly? You guys are free to. And move what up was and it down. again? Just. Two hundred and seven thousand dollars. That's that's Plan C people will not be getting the one fifty, but one hundred. So that four, fifty times the four fourteen. Okay. 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 So that, do you know off the top of your head how much that increase would be for C? The increase in the premium with the. We have that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's we here. got that. It's here. $100. It's a $100 increase a month. Yeah. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91. $91
Mrs. Pickens' concern is, and well taken, is that the amount that we're saving by keeping the extra 50 from the Plan C people is not a, that greater savings. Am I? Am I? That's what I think. That's what you think. Okay. All righty. Okay. So for my clarification, if we went to a vote, we, we still have to make a decision, right? Well, Today if we, we, if we, we got, go to a vote and it, it, and it carries, uh, if, if it doesn't three carry 3-2, two, two, yeah. then it's voted down and somebody else has to make another motion to maybe do what, what the original motion was, okay? Are we ready to call for a vote? Okay. All righty. Any more discussion? All right. The motion is on the floor from Mr. David Buckles, uh, which what I've stated, but I restated. Plan C, $100. Plan D and E, $150. That's correct. And it was seconded by Mr. Bud McGinnis. All right. Uh, if there are no more discussion, we are now ready to vote. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposers? Aye. aye. It's a two, three. Is that two in favor of the motion and three? Two in opposed. favor, two, two three opposed. opposed. So it's going to, we're going to have to have another motion. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go again and look at this. And again, it is not easy. We are trying to do what we feel is in the best interest of each employee to not give it in one hand, the, the raise and take it away with the other. And so we're back to where we started, but we're concerned and we want to get it as close to right and, as possible. And I also want to say, I understand what the insurance committee is doing and I, and as much as I hate it, I understand that we have to. Mm -hmm. But I just would rather stick to what we came up with and then have some kind of formal information given to our employees that that's what we're doing next year. Uh, Mr. Motor did mention uh, educating the employees. He, he did yeah, say that. Yeah, I know. I know he did. I know. Well, I'm going to try this one more time. I would like to make a motion that we subsidize our employees $150 for each participant in our insurance plans. A second. Okay, it's been motioned by Mrs. Jane Crawford that we accept uh, for item B, board insurance subsidy contribution, $170. $150 across the board for plans C, D, and E. And it was second by Mrs. Holly Pickens. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? Could we word that to say employees? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And we should have. Uh, uh, participant employees. Employee participating particip employees. Participating employees. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Carmony, you have that? Participating employees. Okay. All right, now, all in favor, let it be known by Does I. She need oh, to, uh, we've had, I asked for discussion. She did She's already asked for discussion. I asked for I'm discussion. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. All in favor, let it be known by I. 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 Opposers? Nay. Okay. Right. We have three, four, I mean, yeah. and two opposed. Did you get who you have to know who they are. Mr. McKinnis. McKinnis and Mr. Buckles. Mr. Buckles, yes. Okay. Motion carries three, two. Okay. Our next item of discussion, elimination of the monthly premium, premium supplement for each retiree. By, um, the, by the way, I'm on plan C, so I just yeah. say that out. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just not prepared to do that. I, 
I think we talk about retaining employees and, and hiring employees and if this is a benefit that draws people to our county then you know I say we keep it okay that's how I feel in my opinion Ms. is for as long uh, as we can Ms. yes yes Miss Odom had a has a, a, a solution it's not a rapid solution but she's working on it uh, with new new hires and things over the over time so and yeah. my, my opinion is of such for whatever it's worth <laughs> we we rewarded those 20 plus employees mm -hmm. and I say when a person has given to to this district mm -hmm. then I'm all for uh, not eliminating the monthly premium supplement to each of the employees now that's my two cents worth uh, any other discussion before we uh, entertain a motion madam go ahead bud. just for clarification how much is it again so we have Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, to continue the monthly uh, premium supplement to each retiree. I'll second that. All right, it's been motioned by Mr. Buckles that we continue the monthly premium supplement of $100 for each retiree, and it was seconded by Mrs. Jane Crawford. Uh, any discussion? All right. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes? Hearing none. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, the final item on our agenda is the wellness coordinator uh, $500 supplement. Now, Rhonda, I need you, some discussion on this. I mean, just where did tell you me say the money is. comes from to pay them? That's out of the wellness project that we have. Okay. Right, right. And at the current time, we still continue to use that. Um, the United Healthcare also did wellness, but it went into the, the cards. And okay. All okay. employees could earn up to $200 that went into their pocket in the form of gift cards. Mm -hmm. So we continued over the years to continue using that leftover money, and there's still like 130000 in there. So and so how much does it cost per year to, to give the $500 supplement? Got it. I remember this. I remember this. $500, so we can fund it. Yes. We can continue to fund it. Um, you said you had a list now, of things they do. Yeah. Uh, you made me remember. I, I, I recall it being at the last school I was at and when I was here at the district office that wellness coordinator would come up with ideas. And who picks that person at each, each site? Has an election, okay. okay. The, and they get their the representative. So Nikki kind of follows up on what yes, they, they do? Have to it specifies in the letter what they have to do. Okay, and so the insurance committee is recommending that we continue to pay that supplement? Okay. I'll make a motion that we um, award the wellness coordinator at each site a $500 supplement. I second. All right, it's been motioned by Mrs. Jane Crawford that we uh, award each wellness coordinator at the various sites a $500 supplement, and it was seconded by Mrs. Holly Pickens. Discussion? All right, hearing none. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes? Hearing none. Motion carries 5-0. Madam Chair, um, talked to our board attorney, and I've got the email from your board attor your attorney for the RFP. All right, and we're going to uh, and allow. And I'm going to ask you to read it out loud. Me? For, yes. For the, uh, just for the record. Okay. If you would, just. In, and there aren't any, any, any words on here that I would need someone to decipher. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, help, I'll help you. No insurance term or not. A bunch of numbers there. But. Okay. I'll read it if you want me to. 
external notice of protest, RFP 54006201015. And then in brackets it has RKC dash active dot FID three two eight three six nine three. Mr. Superintendent, in reference to your question regarding the notice of protest received for RFP 54006215, Section 120.1573C, Florida statute requires receipt of a formal written protest, not simply a notice of protest to stay the contract award process. Thus far, the district has only received a notice of protest. Therefore, the award process may continue. And it, it so ends. And it did. And when, after the meeting, would you sign that document and give Ms. Cormany? You don't okay. have to talk about it, just sign, yes, sir. sign it later. Thank you. Okay. If there is nothing else to come before the board during this special board meeting, it is officially adjourned.